I have a very fond memory from growing up. I grew up through the sixth grade, through 12 years old, in the city in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And it really was a, a city kind of experience living in Minneapolis uh, and loved the city growing up. But one of my fond memories is of as a child growing up in the city, once a year for a few years, we would go to northern Wisconsin, nearby Wisconsin, and stay in a log cabin that was owned by one of the members of the church that we attended. She would take us up there. She was a, a single woman who had never married, was a, a nurse at the Veterans Affairs Hospital there in Minneapolis. And we would spend a week with her up at the cabin that her father actually built. He built this log cabin on a lake in northern Wisconsin. Now again, I was a city kid, so just imagine that going from living in the city, and our family really stayed confined to the city. We didn't get out very often from where we lived. And uh, to go out to the country was really a big deal. And this cabin, of course, it was a log cabin. It and didn't have running water or indoor toilet. It had an outdoor pump that we'd have to bring some water to be able to prime the pump. And then it had an outhouse. And again, so it was just like stepping into a, an, a totally uh, different world to go from being in the city where I would, you know, it was the 1970s growing up there, play out in the neighborhood with the kids, and a real city type experience, then to go to the country like that. And one of my fond memories of being there is we would swim in the lake, we would go through the woods, or we would drive into the town, which was some ways away. But at the evening time, we would do something that I very much enjoyed. The neat thing about this cabin is not only was it an old cabin that her father had built, and I can't remember if it was the 30s, I think it might have been the 1930s when he built this log cabin, but it was filled with stuff from the past. There was an old Victrola that you would crank up and it had the big old like horn type thing and we would listen to these thick old records from Thomas Edison days, you know, uh, on this Victrola. And then she had this, this large furniture style uh, radio, tube radio, the old fashioned tube radios that uh, had AM. And at night we would listen to faraway stations. We would, I remember tuning in this, this big um, cabinet like tube radio and pick up Chicago. We were way up in northern uh, Wisconsin and to be tuning in to some place far away and connecting with it. And not only did it have a, a, an AM radio on it, it would pick up some shortwave radio. And so it was really exciting to try to pick in and dial in and tune in something very far away, something on the other side of the planet. And so that was an exciting thing we would do in the evenings. Of course, the other exciting thing is, is uh, getting under the covers when the bats would fly sometimes through the uh, through the cabin, and f some years when we were there, uh, the bats did do that, and uh, there were mice and all kinds of things. It was a fascinating th experience for a child. But I want to focus in on that tuning in and connecting with something far away from you that you weren't able to tune in and connect with before. Uh, some For some reason, being up there in the northern Wisconsin, we could get far away places that I couldn't get in the city on my little transistor AM radio. And that ability to tune in and to connect with those things was was wonderful for a child. Well, that brings me to uh, the theme of this video, and that is, where is God in the universe? For many people, God seems very far away, and the question is, why is it that they don't experience God? In fact, many people who really struggle with faith, uh, many of the, the very strong detractors of faith, are people who say, well, I don't feel God, I don't experience God, and I don't see God. And they'll often refer to the fact that we don't see Him with our physical eyes in the universe. We haven't discovered Him with our scientific instruments, uh, with our telescopes. How is it that we don't experience God? Where is God? If there's a God, why don't I experience Him? Well, the answer that the Bible gives is that the reason why we don't experience God is because we're out of tune with God. Uh, it was C.S. Lewis who said that the instrument for tuning in God, for connecting with God, is the human person. 
And if the instrument is out of whack, if it's, in his language, I think is in mere Christianity, if it's dirty, but here we might just say, if it's, if it's not working, then it's not going to pick up the reality. That might be right all around it, right around them. If uh, human beings are not correctly tuned, God can be right there and they cannot sense him because their sensors are not dialed in to God. And that's precisely uh, the picture of the Bible. The picture of the Bible is that because of becoming out of tune with God, human beings are cast out of the garden, out of the place of the, the true possibility or the original possibility that was meant to be. And they're now in this uh, experience of life of being apart from God. I just had a funeral uh, graveside service in this time of the coronavirus. Uh, we're limiting what we do, and so we have to have now, instead of a big funeral, a small service, and this family will have a um, public viewing later. But I'm wearing a suit and everything because of having this graveside service just uh, an hour or so ago. And the passage we read at that graveside service is from the last chapter of the Bible, Revelation 22, and it says, in chapter 22, verse 4, they shall behold the face of God. And the picture of paradise restored is of our unbroken communication and experience of God's presence. The Bible is very plain in its understanding that we don't live in that place right now. We're not in Eden, the place of the original possibility. We're not in heaven. We're not in the place of, of the final realization of our humanity. We're in this in-between place. So the question is, where do we see God today? And the Christian answer, again, has always been, we will behold the face of the glory of God in the person of Jesus Christ. And why it is that we have to keep coming back to Him in His Word, keep coming back to Him in the experience of the community that's being inspired by Him and where different members are manifesting aspects of His being, you know, the Bible talks about the, the church being the temple and that it's made up of many members who all have different spiritual gifts and they manifest the spirit or the presence of God for the common good. So that in this world, the place to see God is in the community that's being shaped by the person of Jesus Christ and that spirit that comes from him, that energy, that presence that one uh, experiences through coming to him over and over again in his word, uh, receiving him by faith, receiving the things that signify and seal him to us, our baptism into him, our communion with him, and then life in the community where his presence is being manifested in the individual members. Th that's where we find and experience God in a world where we still have this nature that has this uh, tendency to be out of tune with God. And we have to continually be going to Christ to, to overcome that incapacity for knowing God and receive the, the knowledge of God in the face of Jesus Christ while we walk this earth. But the promise is, and why, do a, why does a Christian believe that? Well, I believe that because I experience the presence of God in that community that foretaste of things to come. I began to experience that as a child at that church in Minneapolis where this particular woman uh, attended with us. Uh, and it was in that community that I became convinced that this is the presence of God manifesting itself to me. And the spirit I'm receiving from this group of people is that presence of God. And my conviction of things not seen uh, flows out of that having personally experienced for myself the presence of God. Uh, and I believe that my being is the instrument for knowing God. And it's in Jesus Christ where the, the failure of my being to be in tune is overcome because he was the person who was totally in tune with God. And so it's when I'm connected to him and I'm turning to God in him that I become able because he's the one in tune. He's the one who is the mediator. And it's that experience of the presence of God in Jesus Christ that convinces me of God's being with me in this world. He is Emmanuel, God with us.